Now we finally have an answer. On Wednesday, officials from NASA and the Russian state-owned space corporation Roscosmos said a replacement Soyuz spacecraft will launch and autonomously dock with the station next month. The crew that would have flown in the damaged Soyuz MS-22 vehicle would instead fly home in the Soyuz MS-23 later in 2023. The leaky Soyuz MS-22 vehicle will make an autonomous return to Earth, bereft of crew, likely in March. If an emergency occurs aboard the space station that requires evacuation before the replacement arrives, the cosmonauts could ride home in the damaged capsule, according to Roscosmos official Serhei Kirkalev. But they would face risk from high temperature and humidity levels that exceed medical limit, requiring a more direct re-entry flight home. Space is not a safe place, he said. This situation is not very safe, but it is not a dead end where we have no options. Well, they have accepted the risk and refused the help of SpaceX's Dragon. In some ways, the Russians are even more conservative than we are, so that wouldn't surprise me. Let's find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Four weeks ago, as two Russian cosmonauts were prepping to conduct a spacewalk, a Soyuz spacecraft attached to the ISS started to leak uncontrollably. The spacewalk was canceled, and since then, Russian and U.S. spaceflight engineers have been analyzing the cause of the leak and its implications for future travel to and from the large laboratory in low Earth orbit. They have now deduced that a micrometeoroid, or small piece of orbital debris, struck the external cooling loop of the Soyuz spacecraft, causing all of its coolant to vent out into space and putting a recovery plan in place. Although there were no immediate threats to the seven astronauts on board the space station, there was the not insignificant question of how the three people who had ridden on board this spacecraft into orbit, cosmonauts Serhei Propyev and Dmitry Patelin and NASA's Frank Rubio would subsequently get home. During a call with reporters, NASA and Roscosmos officials said that a Russian state commission concluded that because of the lost coolant, the spacecraft's radiator could no longer cool the spacecraft on its own. Russian officials believe the Soyuz MS-22 is still flyable in an emergency. However, without an efficient way to radiate heat during the six-hour return to Earth, the interior of the spacecraft could overheat. This could damage the flight computers used to set a precise return trajectory and put the crew at risk. Kirkalev said the temp inside the Soyuz MS-22 could reach the low 40s in Celsius, that's 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, during the return to Earth. The concern about crew member health is as much about humidity as it is about temperature in such a scenario. Under the revised plan, the Soyuz MS-23 will launch on February 20th without a crew but with some cargo. After docking with the station, the crew would spend two weeks transferring equipment like customized seat liners from Soyuz 22 to 23, while placing in 22 other cargo that can be sent back to Earth that's not sensitive to overheating. Soyuz MS-22 would then undock and attempt a landing back in Kazakhstan in automated mode. Until the new Soyuz spacecraft arrives next month, the Soyuz MS-22 vehicle remains the lifeboat for Propyev, Patelin, and Rubio to escape the space station if an emergency forces an evacuation of the complex. Besides the radiator, all other systems on the Soyuz MS-22 remain healthy, including control thrusters, Malobano has said. In the unlikely event of an evacuation, NASA and Roscosmos are working with SpaceX to potentially accommodate at least one of the Soyuz MS-22 crew members on the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft that's docked at the space station. SpaceX's Dragon Endurance spacecraft delivered NASA astronauts Nicole Mann, Josh Kasada, Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata, and Russian cosmonaut Anna Kakina to the station in October on the Crew-5 mission. The Dragon capsule has four seats, all of which would be filled during an emergency evacuation of the space station. Model Bonnell said at least one extra crew member, and maybe more, could ride back to Earth on the Dragon spacecraft in an area normally used for cargo storage. SpaceX has been extremely responsive, said NASA's ISS program manager Joel Montalbano. But all of this is only for an emergency, only if we have to evacuate the ISS. We're always looking at what we can do to ensure the safety of the crew. 
Nominally, the plan is for when Crew 5 comes home, they come home with four people. If we had to evacuate, we will not have extra seats or suits for extra crew members coming home. That's why you only want to do it as a contingency, Montalbano said. And we have a plan using hardware from Soyuz to safely secure crew members in the area that the cargo normally returns on Dragon. Kirkliff said potential overheating on the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft during an emergency evacuation could be reduced if it returned to Earth with just one or two crew members instead of the full complement of three. That's why we're looking at options that if we need to use Soyuz in case of an emergency, we might reduce the size of crew in order to reduce the heat load on the crew for landing conditions, he said. SpaceX's Crew-5 mission is scheduled to return to Earth this spring following the launch of their replacement on the SpaceX Crew-6 mission. The launch from Florida of the Crew-6 mission with four crew members from the U.S., Russia, and the UAE was scheduled for February 19th, but will likely now be delayed at least a couple of weeks until after the launch and docking of the Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft to replace the damaged 22 vehicle. The crew of Soyuz MS-22 launched to the space station in September. They have been due to return to Earth in March before the dramatic coolant leak. Now their mission will be extended for several months, Kirkliff said. It's possible the three astronauts, including NASA's Frank Rubio, will now not come back to Earth till September 2023, when Soyuz MS-24 is ready to bring the next Russian crew rotation to orbit. This likely means that the crew that's been due to launch this spring, Russia's Oleg Kononenko and Nikolai Chubb and NASA's Laurel O'Hara, will wait until this fall to fly their mission. The awesome thing about our crews is that they're willing to help with whatever we ask, Montalbano said. They will stay until a September launch date if necessary. The crews are prepared, Montalbano said. They're prepared to stay until September launch date if that's the case. If they go earlier and that launch date moves up earlier, then they're prepared to come home earlier. They are ready to go with whatever decision that we give them. Since the coolant leak, Russia and U.S. engineers and managers have collaborated smoothly, Montalbano said. It's remarkable that NASA and Roscosmos are still working exceptionally well together when it comes to ISS operation given all that's happened since Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. This bodes well for continued operation of the space station and the partnership for the remainder of the 2020s, despite hostility on Earth. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.